it's great to be back in the saddle, even if I haven't fully recovered. Thankfully, not too much was missed over the last couple of weeks. Despite the lack of news, amends must be made, and so there's a bit more meat to the review and picks of the week as a result. So, let's not dilly-dally and jump straight into the Friday news wrap-up for the 11th of May, 2012. It has been a while since AppSpy first had the chance to play Ascension Chronicle of the God Slayer. It proved to be seriously addictive and a lot of fun. Since then, an expansion has been added to the game, but more importantly, Storm of Souls, a full four-player pack complete with its own theme and mechanics, is now on offer. Storm is compatible with the Return of the Fallen expansions and available via the in-game store. Over two years ago, Defender Chronicles managed to completely rock our office, featuring fresh, tower defense-like gameplay with huge amounts of replay value. Gimka has been working on the sequel for some time now, and is set to release Heroes of Athelia on the 24th of May. Early previews are sounding very positive, so we await our chance to check out this updated title. Andreas Illiger recently opened up to Flow Studio Games about his experience in handling the overnight success that was Tiny Wings, stating that the first month was scary. So much so that he retreated from the spotlight to get back to his passion of making games. The result of all this time away is yet another game for the iOS. Unfortunately, more details aren't out there just yet, but we're definitely waiting with bated breath. Most may know the Little Red Monster from Get Set Games' popular free title, Mega Jump, but it'll soon be the star of the developer's brand new auto-runner title, Mega Run. Featuring a slew of secrets, power-ups, items and maze-like levels, the game is looking like a lot of fun. Keep an eye out on the 30th of May for this cute title. The Impossible Game is responsible for opening gamers' eyes to the beauty and simplicity of jumping in platformers. Endless runners do much the same, but they can't be as unfair in their design. Fastball by Click Games sticks with very small levels packed with jumping challenges that eventually require insane feats of precise timing to complete. Unfortunately, the third in the series has dropped the ball, and seemingly refuses to bring more than a few cursory changes to the table. Despite a slick visual overhaul and 65 new levels, Fastball 3 is ostensibly the same game, right down to the catchy, yet repetitive background track. Marathon Mode has some potential, featuring impossible game-like lengthy stages with no checkpoints. But the stages aren't as lengthy as the name would suggest, and there's only three of them to knock over. There's nothing particularly wrong with what Fastball 3 offers to fans of the series, but it feels more like an expansion than a sequel. If you're after a challenge and you've not yet played a Fastball game, this is a much easier title to recommend, but it's hard to shake the bean there done that feeling if you're a returning player. Due to being unable to complete a wrap-up last week, I've decided to flag two games for Pick of the Week. Interestingly, despite some of the larger releases, there haven't been any real must-haves. Instead, there have been some titles that deserve recognition for being a lot of fun, and if you're a genre fan for either of these, they're definitely worth checking out. First is, of course, Gameloft's latest release in the Nova series. While disappointing in some ways, the campaign is still a lot of fun and keeps the player hooked thanks to carefully pacing its combat. Thankfully, the campaign is but one half of what's on offer as players can take the fight online, competing in direct deathmatch or team-based modes, with plenty of server options and unlockables to customise how your character plays. Nova 3 isn't a huge leap forward for the series, but a solid shooter for mobile gamers to enjoy. Despite my initial concerns about placing high-profile fighting titles on the iOS platform, companies like Capcom and SNK Playmore have shown that it's not only possible, but a whole lot of fun. Especially when you can compete against opponents around the world. Much like Vault for Street Fighter 4, 2012 is less of a sequel and more of a roster and feature update for the King of Fighters I. Those who bought the first game may feel a little burned, but if you love your fighters, you'll still want to pick up this slick and furious title. With any luck, I'll be able to rest up over the weekend, something I'll sorely need considering one major release hitting PCs over the coming week. Don't worry though, I won't be going anywhere, and you can keep up with our news, reviews, and features via Twitter, Facebook, or by subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Have a great weekend. This has been Andrew with AppSpy.com. We review, you decide.